These are miniatures of the Adeptus Sororitas. In my opinion, the best miniatures Games Workshop has ever made, certainly the most grimdark. Battle Sisters with their power armor and legendary weapons, the Repentia with their sportswear and eviscerator chain swords. This group makes up an Ecclesiarchy kill team. And it's not mine. Painting your friends' models. Is it the most fun you can have sitting in a chair for eight hours, or is it the kiss of death? Okay, that's probably a little hyperbolic, but it's a classic wargaming conundrum. A buddy of yours has some miniatures and they ask you to paint them. I've said yes many times in the past, and I've said yes again. But is it something you should say yes to? What are the pros, what are the cons? I'm gonna analyze this question from every possible angle, and while doing so, paint up my friend Amanda's Ecclesiarchy kill team. She's built them, I based them, and now it is time to paint them. Some of the most beautiful and detailed minis that Games Workshop has ever made. Let's go! Black primer right over the old paint. I never strip models if I don't have to. I really don't like to do it, and it's rarely necessary. If the model is really caked up, you have to, but other than that, you can put 100 layers of paint and everything will be fine. I like a good black prime because it becomes my shadows, and all I have to deal with is brightening things up through highlighting. And speaking of highlighting, all the Battle Sisters got a Zenithal highlight of blue, covering about 75% of each mini. And then another Zenithal of a light green blue over the top 25%. These sisters are very detailed, and this will help to highlight a lot without me having to get a brush into all those hard to reach spots. And just like the Battle Sisters, I did a two-step color Zenithal on the Repentia, with a big blast of beige red and then a little bit of tan paint over top. A typical Zenithal is white in preparation for glazing with colors, but this will save me a step. The Repentia Superior got a dark red and a bright red over her battle armor to differentiate her from the other battle sisters and to make her look more appropriate next to the warm colored Repentia. Then I decided to throw some color onto the bases. Typically I saved the bases for last, but I wanted to switch things up a bit. I base coated these with yellow tan and having this color on the bases from the jump will help me make color decisions later. In a way, all these minis are done. Three colors and up, tournament ready. There are a million ways to approach mini painting and it's nice sometimes to have the models all base coated and ready for the perfecting stage of painting, my favorite part of painting, highlighting. I got the base coats on there and I have a plan for painting these ladies because the first big thing of painting your friend's models, you really should do it in a timely fashion because you can't just hang on to your friend's miniatures forever. One time I was painting a 4,000 point Eldar army for my cousin. I mean, it was a commission, he paid me to do it, but still the project dragged on and on for six months because I was in college, I had a job and I was procrastinating a lot and I felt guilty that whole time. So. I'm gonna be painting these ladies up quick, but not rush painting. Good painting quickly. I put the same blue colors I airbrushed onto the Battle Sisters onto my wet palette and mixed in some white to brighten them up. I took some paint onto a nice sharp brush and I'm trying something new on these ladies. I laid this down on all the spots that got hit most with the airbrush, putting the paint down in a dotty and squiggly pattern to make some irregular looking light blue green highlights. Then I did the same for the cloth, making a light blue and putting scraggly patches and dots where the light would most catch on these shapes. It's okay that it's not perfectly blended because of the next step, specular highlights. I took a white paint and did some very small highlights in the middle of each of my messy colored highlights. This shows the material to be shiny and reflective. This is a really fun and quick way to bring attention to all those fun details on the model without having to actually paint much. I got a little too excited and overdid the white on the Sister Superior. Less is more with this style of painting. I toned it down just right on the rest of the team. Now the armor is looking great, but there is another little trick I can do to make the armor look more refined. I made up a brown glaze, mixing some red, brown, paint, medium, and water together. I used this to pin shade in between the armor panels and glaze this over the shadows. Right now, the armor is just blue and white. Another color will bring it to life and make it look more like I tried a lot harder than I did. And this red, brown is a good approximation of rust and dirt that is built up over the armor. I don't know if this style has a name, small highlights with a dot of white, but I'm gonna call it cherry picking. It's a pretty quick process because there's not a lot of spots on the model that my brush actually touches. Two layers of highlights, no blending or glazing, and a targeted brown wash to add another color onto the mini. You don't want to overdo colors, but you should have at least two colors on every spot. Yeah, that worked out. About 10 minutes a model to get the armor and cloth done. These ladies are probably the perfect thing to do this style of painting on. It's tiny models with lots and lots of detail. Probably Gene Stealer, Cult, and Tao would also be good picks. I would like to try it on Space Marines, but I have a feeling that they're so much bigger and their surfaces are bigger, it wouldn't really work out. But these gals' armor is done, it's time for everything else. On the wooden reliquary, I made up a fake wood grain by base coating with a brown, painting on thin vertical stripes of dark brown and then thin vertical stripes of light brown. 
On all the metal bits, I wanted metal, but quick and dirty metal. So I did my classic simple grim dark metal with base coats of lead belcher and gold paint on all the weapons and shoulder armor. It really stands out that these are just simple base coats next to carefully highlighted armor, but the next steps will fix that. A heavy black wash over all the metal bits. And then instead of highlighting with a brush, I took a tiny piece of foam and sponged on some silver paint over the gunmetal and gold. The sponge will only catch on the raised parts and leave everything else untouched. It'll brighten up the gunmetal and desaturate the gold, leaving everything a lovely shade of grim dark. These battle sisters are rapidly nearing completion and I am entering phase two of painting friends' miniatures. Sadness, because I am really starting to like these miniatures. And they're not mine. I gotta give them back. Ugh. I might be able to visit them occasionally when I play Kill Team, but they're not my minis, and that's kind of sad. They're almost done. The only thing left is the faces. I don't have them on painting handles yet, but luckily I can easily attach them to some Cobalt Keep painting hilts because they are on Cobalt Keep bases. Magnetized bases are the bee's knees. It's the best thing to have on your miniature's feet, but it can be a pain in the butt to find the appropriate magnet and then mix up some green stuff or milliput, super glue it together, and then wait hours for it to dry. Cobalt Keep spaces are the solution. Their bases are sold with or without magnets and have a built-in slot perfectly sized and centered for a magnet. Just a drop of super glue and a satisfying squeeze later and your mini is magnet ready. Not only is Cobalt Keep's bases perfect for holding magnets, but they are also the best quality wargaming bases on the market. Made of thick plastic and available in all the standard sizes, such as the ubiquitous 25, 28.5, and 32mm round bases. And they also have all the vehicle and cavalry bases too, like the 75mm oval, 80mm circle, and the flyer 120mm oval. Cobalt Keep makes the finest wargaming bases, and if you want to check them out, you can follow the link below and use our code EOB10 at checkout to get 10% off your order of bases. Faces are the hardest thing to paint. I always hear about the Sisters of Battle having terrible faces, but I think they look pretty darn good. And let's be honest, how many great face sculpts survive a paint job? I base coated the faces with a beige red and a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade. Then I made up three highlights, mixing more and more white paint into my beige red, then highlighting the brow, cheekbones, noses, and chins. One classic miniature painting trick I always recommend is paint the heads a different color. It makes them stand out so much and it draws the eye. Nice warm faces on a cold body is a great look, and I'm gonna take this one step further with the hair. I want white hair, but I don't just wanna paint them solid white. Then it would look like a Lego dude's haircut. Instead, I base coated with a gray, then I took a light gray and a sharp long bristled brush and made many, many vertical lines, leaving a part down the center. Then I did the same thing again with white paint, focusing on the bangs and the top of the head. It's a lot of work, but it makes for some actually hair-looking hair, and it's good practice for fine lines. With the Battle Sisters complete, it was time for the Repentia. The Battle Sisters are done. I tried to give them a really grim, dark paint job, which I think works much better. I've struggled in the past to paint Sisters of Battle, and I think it's because I go too pretty. I paint them too cleanly, and it doesn't really tell the story of what the Sisters of Battle are, which is very pretty miniatures in the grim, dark, evil universe of Warhammer 40k. And it's reminding me of another problem with painting your friend's miniatures, which is the lie of practice. It's not really a lie. I am getting better at painting Sisters of Battle. However, I'm using up my initial excitement of painting Sisters of Battle miniatures, and I'm gonna the wind is gonna be out of my sails when it's time to start over fresh on my own miniatures. I started with some Reichland Flesh Shade over the skin, then a super watery blue glaze over the clothing. This sect of sisters wear blue, and I want to represent that on the Repentia to tie them into the overall team. The paint will look a lot more saturated going down than it will in the end. Next came all the metal bits, like their Eviscerator Chainswords. These I painted just like the Battle Sisters metallics. A base coat of Lead Belcher, one of the few really solid colors from Games Workshop, a black wash, darken and shade the recesses, and then a careful sponging of bright silver. Now for the moment I've been waiting for, a big bright contrasting color. I am painting all the purity seals on the team red. It's gonna stand out dramatically next to all the cold colors on the miniature. A base coat of red and then a red wash to shade all the folds and recesses. Finishing these little prayers off with a highlight of bright red, painting some vertical lines across the folds of the paper and edge highlighting. For the wax seals, because red was already taken, I went with a pink. A light minty green might also have looked nice, but I like the warmth of pink, putting a drop of the same red wash in the center of each one. This is my second try painting Repentia, and they're probably one of the trickiest models in the whole Games Workshop catalog, which is too bad because I love them. I love the Repentia. They're battle sisters who didn't kick enough ass, so they're demoted to Repentia where they have to kick all the ass. And on the off chance they survive, they get to be battle sisters again. They're really cool miniatures, and the only model left of this kilting to paint is the Repentia Superior. I painted up her head while I was painting up the rest of the Battle Sisters. And look at that mean old granny go. I painted all the metal bits the same way as the rest of the team, and then it was time for some highlights. Red is a special color. I can't just mix in white and highlight exactly like I did the blue armor, so I have to make some changes to the formula. It's still pretty simple though. 
I stippled and squiggled some bright red over all the raised portions of her armor, and then I mixed up pink and very sparingly painted this in the center of each of my highlights. And now for the secret sauce. I went back in with a bright red and glazed this over the pink. This will let a hint of the pink show through while being a nice bright saturated red. Now whips are a weird thing to paint, but I decided her whip would be crackling with energy. So I ripped off another little piece of sponge and poked on some white, having a really dense spot of sponging on the top and bottom of the whip, thinning out in the middle. Then I glazed a blue speed paint over top and under a minute, I had a pretty great looking power whip. Knowing my friend isn't super into Warhammer 40K, I wanna make it as easy as possible to tell the two units apart. So for the Battle Sisters, I went very cold blue and the Repentia, I went very warm red. And I actually, very unlike myself, planned ahead with this color scheme. I didn't just make it up on the spot. So I've got blue and I've got red. And so what color should the bases be? Well, if I turn my color wheel to triads, opposite of blue and red is yellow. So that should make for a very coherent color scheme. I made up a red wash out of a few drops of red paint, one drop of flow aid, and a generous squirt of water. Then I smeared this all over the bases. Then came the yellow dry brushing. I did heavy dry brushing of yellow mixed with tan to cover up most of the red, leaving it in the recesses, and then a dry brushing of yellow mixed with white to make a nice interesting yellow base. The only thing left was picking out some of those base decorations. These little mushrooms were part of our February terrain pack, and can be found on our Comics, Games, and Things page, along with all of our previous terrain packs. If you never want to miss out on our monthly terrain, then our Patreon is the place to be. This month we have the Orc Brewery, complete with an orky bar and an orky stage. Let's be honest, often painting your friend's miniatures is a bit of a bribe. Here, I've painted your models for you, now you have to play with me. And I don't know if that is a great exchange. Now, in my situation, we play Kill Team. I have no doubt these miniatures are gonna get played with and it's really just icing on the cake. But if you paint your friend's miniatures in exchange for them playing with you, you might come to find out when you're playing that game they honestly don't like it very much. In which case, your time probably would have been spent doing something else. The Ecclesiarchy Kill Team is one of the strongest kill teams to come out of the Compendium. I have played it a lot, although my kill team is Oops All Repentia. A super fun kill team that is super weak, but Amanda's team is pretty optimal, with an incredibly strong melee punch of the Repentia backed up by the three-up armor save and special weapons of the Battle Sisters. I had a good time painting these minis up for our friend, but should you paint your friend's minis? Well, it depends. It's a nice thing to do, and it's always good to slay a little bit more gray in this world, but you should definitely encourage them to paint their own minis first. They might just need that little push. Who knows, they might actually find that they really enjoy it. Offer to help them paint their minis. Make a day of it. Get a big case of Diet Dr. Do and some oven pizzas and show them a good time. Break out all the paints and brushes and make a big old mess. It's the other half of the hobby. The game's the game, that never changes. Unless it's 40K, then it changes all the time. But your army is your army, and it'll be just that little bit more special if you painted the minis yourself. Thanks for watching.